Ellis Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Eric Burden and War and Spill the Wine. Danny and the Juniors from 1957. Rock and Roll is here to stay. Great iced tea. That's what you get with Lipton every time. Rich, refreshing, recharging. The reason? Lipton flow through tea bags. Like two bags of flavor in one. Not more tea, more tea flavor. You can see the difference in the bag, taste the difference in the glass. Make it by the pitcher full. Lipton flow through tea bags to make iced tea great. Listen to the Lipton whistle. Whistle, whistle, whistle. WCBS-FM. WCBS-FM, I'm Ed Williams till 2 o'clock. Bobby Wayne at 2, Dave Hershey, my companion. The McCoys. Hang on, Sloopy. 1965 of the McCoys. Hang on, Sloopy. Hang on in there. Steve Lodge. 61 was a year. Portrait of my love. The charts. Joseph E. Levine presents the Academy Award winner, The Graduate, starring Anne Bancroft, Dustin Hoffman, and Catherine Ross, with songs performed by Simon and Garfunkel. Directed by Academy Award winner Mike Nichols, The Graduate, from AFCO Embassy Pictures, rated PG, parental guidance suggested. Now you can see The Graduate again. The Graduate starts Wednesday at the Coronet Theater. That's right. Variable cloudiness today and tonight with some showers of thunderstorms likely mostly this afternoon and evening. High today near 80, low tonight in the upper 60s. It's currently 80 degrees. Ed Williams to 2 o'clock with David Hirsch, The Fifth Dimension. Let the sun shine in, The Fifth Dimension. My love must be a kind of blind love. I only have eyes for you. WCBS FM, New York. Good afternoon. This is Bill Gillian with the news. Today is Monday, July 10th, 1972, and on this day 10 years ago, we were hearing this news. The Pacific night is turned into day as U.S. sets off nuclear explosion 200 miles over Johnson Island. Today's main news, at 3.32 this afternoon, the shadow of the moon will begin to fall on New York City as the moon eclipses the sun. An hour later, at the peak of the eclipse, about 80% of the sun will be blocked for New Yorkers. In the last solar eclipse in 1970, 134 people reported eye damage from looking directly at the phenomenon. Two people were completely blinded. 
Here's some advice on watching the event from Bob Donnelly in San Francisco. It will be a big day for scientists all over the world. A total eclipse of the sun will be observed and studied from land, sea, and air as the moon's shadow blots out the sun. But the learned scientists have a word of caution for the millions of Americans in a position to view the phenomenon. To see it safely, don't watch it. Captain Robert Risser, the director of the Morrison Planetarium in San Francisco, had this advice. I would caution people not to ever look at the sun directly. It's extremely dangerous to do so. It can ruin your eyesight completely, even a very short exposure to the direct sunlight. And even at time of eclipse, the sun is still plenty bright enough to do serious damage to your eyes. No sunglasses, smoked glasses, or exposed photographic film are absolutely safe, said Risser, no matter how little of the sun is showing. Bob Donnelly for CBS News, San Francisco. New Yorkers won't get a chance to watch another solar eclipse until the year 2024. Senator George McGovern today rejected the offer of Maine Senator Edmund Muskie to settle the California seating dispute at a closed meeting before tonight's 7.30 opening of the Democratic National Convention in Miami Beach. McGovern says he sees nothing to be gained from a closed meeting of the kind proposed earlier today by Muskie, that the decision on California should be left in the hands of the delegates to the convention. New Jersey Democrat Senator Harrison Williams says a McGovern loss would hurt the party. We haven't seen anything uh, that compares in any way to the, uh, the, the great momentum an individual has gotten, and it's McGovern, and the momentum has uh, uh, grown out of the new electorate, the young people, pretty much. Uh, and, uh, of course, it's a lot broader than that, but there's something new going on in the party, and they got the, the, the newness got behind George McGovern to... Uh, to lose it now, particularly if we were on that credentials uh, uh, fight, would, I think, be very damaging to the party. Meanwhile, Charles Snyder, campaign manager for Alabama Governor George Wallace, says no Democrat will be able to win in November unless Wallace is on the ticket. There's a big movement toward Governor Wallace winning the nomination down here, and I, I think maybe we're finally getting the message to the people that if Governor Wallace is not on that ticket, there's no way they can win in November. That's a simple fact. And uh, I think that uh, there's more people than just Governor Wallace and myself and the, and the governor's staff concerned about how you go about winning in November. And more of them are beginning to realize that Governor Wallace is the only one who can put together the three factors that I mentioned yesterday, which is a Democratic vote, an independent vote, and a Republican uh, drain-off vote. The National Women's Political Caucus has selected Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm of New York as its choice for the vice presidential nomination. Frank Lucchese was fired today as the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies. The 45-year-old Lucchese was in his second year as manager of the Phillies. No word immediately on his replacement. The Yankees will be playing baseball against the Angels in California tonight while the Giants meet the Mets here in New York. Considerable cloudiness this afternoon and tonight, with showers or thunder showers likely. Gradual clearing tomorrow, except a chance of a few lingering showers. High this afternoon and tomorrow in the mid-70s to the low 80s. Low tonight in the upper 50s to the low 60s. On Wednesday, it'll be sunny, warm, and humid. The Midtown Manhattan temperature right now, 80 degrees. This is Bill Gilling. WCBS.